Welcome back to another Pray the Debatrius. We're going to talk about a couple different things. This story right here stands out quite a bit. Yeah, just read that headline for yourself. New research, research identifies distinct masturbation, satisfaction patterns among men and women, self-love. This is a YouTube video that is 18 years and older. It's adult tagged. Okay, I do that in all my videos, which probably is a detriment to getting more people to follow my channel. But, you know, if you do, if you happen to have not done that yet and you're listening to this on the audio end, look for my YouTube feed, youtube.com slash jbrasco951. That's where it's at. So here's a story from SciPost. New research provides insight into how women and men's masturbation frequency is linked to their sexual satisfaction. And the findings are published in the Archives of Sexual Behavior, indicating that masturbation often serves as a complementary function for women, but a compensatory role among men. So without going into the details of what they were saying about this, the researcher here, Nanche Fisher, a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Oslo in Norway, masturbation is one of the most simplest sexual activities. Of course, a lot of people are really saying much about it. Of all sexual behaviors, it seems to be most often motivated by pleasure, or at least release of tension. It's important for the sexual development in that it gives the opportunity to learn about one's body and sexual response, which in turn help to negotiate more rewarding sexual practices with partners. Masturbation can be a way of sexually satisfying needs in later life when people have widowed or may experience difficulty finding a new sexual partner or if your partner has become ill. So it's a way to promote sexual health. They went and spoke with over 4,000 Norwegians, 18 to 89 years of age, 66% of women, 84% of men reported masturbation in the past month. So common, but they said it on this blind trial here with nobody saying anything, being kept discreet, of course. And for men, they reported they masturbated two or three times a week. For women, two or three times per month. And I think that part of that would be that for men, the time needed to release tension or to let go is significantly shorter than women, just the way it is. And they mentioned how with pornography use, that both men and women were more likely to fall into the cluster characterized by high masturbation frequency and high sexual satisfaction. Women with greater sexual variety and higher intercourse frequency were more likely to report high masturbation frequency and high sexual satisfaction. So intensifying with pornography, watching that as a part. But remember, if you're going to do masturbation, the more healthier way is stimulating yourself with content that's going to be, that brings out feelings of love and admiration and appeal as opposed to just being lusting over somebody over their body parts or how they're being treated on camera. And that's one something I've really learned about for myself. That is, I mean, really, when you talk about even with some religious sectors that you want to masturbate over love and not lust. I mean, if it's the case, you know, if you're going to use some video content, something visual, well, there's, there's that. They also found as well that Sexual distress, negative body image, and negative general self-image were linked to sexual dissatisfaction, and the relationship between negative general self-image and sexual dissatisfaction was observed among male participants. And that men's genitalia play an important role in defining masculinity in terms of appearance and performance. And that would explain the influences of men's genital self-image on their sexual satisfaction. So it's not anything we haven't learned before, but this is something they wanted to make sure to make a point of. Now, in the meantime, one other story I want to bring up here in this episode is dating up and why you should stay in your own league. This is just a companion piece to some other things I talked about on a previous video about the fat phobia problem for Tinder and the way we're handling things on dating apps and how we need to match ourselves with people with similar values. So they talk about the matching hypothesis that people will end up in, with partners with similar mate values. In online dating, people want the best partner with the highest mate value to try to date up, but often fall short, which is what we were talking about with women or men that carry more weight, maybe not have 
they might have let themselves go and the features that might have given their masculine the handsomeness for a, ma- for a masculine man or a masculine individual or a woman with feminine features or a feminine individual to lose all that because of the weight gain that warps your look you know that's a th- the case when you're at least 50 to 70 pounds when you're about 50 pounds overweight that's one thing but when you're over 100 pounds overweight and there's a detriment of possibly having sex having health issues as a result down the line that's when it doesn't look so attractive but then also realizing that we have people out there that have particular body types that we should try to match ourselves with more similar body types much like we always some people might look for similar cultural or certain traits or certain values religious cultural whatever that might be and so you want to find somebody that sure you want to find the proverbial 10 out of 10 that might be in your mind but that's not who you're going to be able to get so that 10 out of 10 that beauty standard that's out there you have to achieve that same beauty standard to grab somebody that has the similar beauty standard so that's what they're talking about with here and your social media value includes all the factors that make you more or less desirable to your date. Physical appearance, number one, quality, skills, traits, personality. If you're a seven out of 10, you're going to end up with another seven or very close. Tens goes with tens, two with twos, and so on. And you know what? We need to keep that in mind for all of us out there. And no matter what, if, we, if I'm a seven looking for a seven, I hope that that seven is going to be depraved and debaucherous. 